Hello there everyone, Ash and Flash here, and welcome on into my spoiler review of Obi-Wan Kenobi Season 1. And I say Season 1 because I need a Season 2. I, I loved this show so much. So if you want to, if you want to skip around to different topics, we've got non-spoilers, spoilers, and then Lego Talk, which is where I'll talk about how the sets that we have for this show do in terms of their uh, accuracy and how much they, I guess, represent the show, and just some ideas for sets that I'd love to see in the future. But uh, yeah, let's go into non-spoilers, I guess, first, and we'll go episode by episode. Non-spoilers, like I said, I love this show. I It went in directions that... I never expected. Like, I genuinely, going into the show, I was like, oh, it's Obi-Wan, and we know at some point he's going to meet Vader, and, and there's, they're going to do all that. And going into it, I was really upset about that because I was one of the people that was, like, upset about the lines of, you know, when I left you as but the learner, now I'm the master, and just certain things like that. But this show was so careful with that. And, and they even go on to fix other plot holes which i didn't even know existed so i appreciate all that and we'll go into everything there but my goodness this show was really great i don't know if i reacted maybe as severely emotionally um as any other show uh, that they put out on disney plus so far i think that this really just it blew me away. It was such a surprise. I didn't know I needed this. There was so many things here that I just didn't know I needed, which is what I feel like Star Wars recently has been doing for me, that just giving me little moments that I, I could only dream of, especially with Boba Fett. But like here, it's like just moments that are just crazy, and I, I truly appreciate that. So let's go in and go episode by episode. Part one, again, I, I didn't know what to expect in terms of like, we knew it was six episodes and the minute that they showed Alderaan, I just, I broke down. I, I never in a million years thought that we'd be going to Alderaan. I never thought that this plot would revolve around Leia. We had known, maybe I had heard it, but I blocked it out of my mind. I knew there was a, long, a young Luke. I knew that Mark Hamill had tweeted about it, whatever. I knew that all that existed. However... The minute we saw young Leia and her mannerisms, her actions, and the way she spoke, just, it broke me down. It broke me down. And to hear as well just the lines that Bale had about her and how he may not have lived, <laughs> I'm going to cry saying this, he may not have lived to see her become the leader physically, see it with his own eyes, but he knew that someday she would become that person. And in in him saying that, I, I, I visualized just all the different stage <laughs> all the different stages of Leia up until Rise of Skywalker. And I, I lost it. And it was just it was so powerful to see all those moments there. I, I really appreciated that. Also, the fact that it was it was a two part premiere. <sighs> Man, you know, it was just it was great and I'm sad that it's over, but it was like great that we were able to, you know, see more of that. And the Grand Inquisitor as well was just so cool to see. Like, I really loved seeing the Inquisitors in live action. Now, I, I go back and forth with should his head have been larger. I don't know because I rewatched Rebels because I was just loving the show in this era so much that I went back and I rewatched all of Rebels. When the Grand Inquisitor came on screen, I was looking at, like, the size of his head. And it was pretty much the size of Kanan's. And, well, you wouldn't want Kanan's to be the huge size that we saw in Episode 3. So, I just thought that was interesting. Now, uh, I don't know. I feel like it's not as intimidating or as scary if his head's not as elongated as we saw. But, nonetheless, I, I thought that the moments we did have with the Inquisitors, I did thoroughly enjoy seeing them in live action were they used to the fullest no they weren't they weren't as cool as they were in rebels if i'm being honest but again it was still neat to see them i know that some people were really upset about that and and some people already in episode two stupidly were saying that oh, they're breaking canon they killed the grand inquisitor they don't even care about rebels they're gonna retcon it no that's not what this is and and as we saw as they continued through here 
like, especially when it comes to the Leia thing, which I'll talk about now. I know that I'm kind of talking about part one, two together, but when they meet up and specifically, you know, he goes back and forth with telling her, you know, I'm Obi-Wan Kenobi and Ben, whatever. I, I can't recall. It was so long ago, but there's a minute in A New Hope when she says, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. Then when Luke opens the door and he goes, I'm here with Ben Kenobi and she goes, Ben Kenobi. It would make no sense, right? Because they've never met before. And how why, how would she know who Ben Kenobi is? But with this show, it fills in that plot hole, which I love that they were able to do that. Go back and sort of fix that little writing error or whatever you want to call it. The fact that they were able to go back and do that, I, I thought is really, really cool. So I appreciate that, and we'll touch on the line that I was talking about at the very start. I was concerned about that, but I enjoyed this all, and and Kamal Nanjiani as well. I really loved his character. Like I thought that was a really fun twist um, on on the idea of during this time frame that there's people pretending to be Jedi. I, I thought that's really great. Part three. I thought was fun. I enjoyed just some of the moments and again, heartbreaking when he was talking about Padme. And I, again, he talked about Padme in episode two, but when he was sort of, you know, when Leia came to the realization that, that he knew her, or at least her mother, but the fact that he, he wanted you know, it would have been easier for him to be her father, to just be like, yeah, Leia, I am your dad versus no, your dad's actually a horrible scarred monster that's just been terrorizing the galaxy for 10 years. Like, that's the easier way to go about it. I, I thought that was really powerful, that line. And even just seeing Vader here, finally, you know, not just the, the breathing tubes and everything. And Oh, I forgot about part two, just his reaction to finding out Vader was, st that Anakin was still alive, I thought was crazy. Um, but the minute that he was tearing through that town, like that, that flick of the head, whoa, like there's shots in this that I will never forget. Like, Powerful Vader moments that I think are on par. Mm, I was going to say on par. Maybe not as on par because it was like so special Rogue One. But definitely up there with like those moments that I, I'm just those visuals. I don't think we'll get out of our minds. And, and there was that moment of him turning really, really quickly. Now, I love that Vader doesn't want to kill Obi-Wan. Or at least at that point, he didn't want to kill him. <laughs> he just wants to hurt you. Really? really bad and I'm, i apologize for the suicide squad reference but that that's literally what came into my mind when i was watching that it was like he doesn't want to kill him he just wants him to feel the pain to burn him alive just like obi that he thinks just like obi-wan did to him all those years on mustafar i love that i really do and and i think that that was such a powerful moment uh of just seeing his anger and his rage there i i thought was really cool even though we don't see anything because it's an emotionless mask you you see the fire there the reflection i just thought was was really really cool however this is where the show to me really really struggled and it was reva and her convenience of just knowing and doing everything and that's my complaint with her not the acting not any of this and you are allowed to not like a black character for specific reasons i again i've been labeled a racist for not liking black minifigures in a in the marvel series but then my favorite is captain america so people just jump to that they like to throw that around a lot and it is disappointing and i'm not saying everyone did that and i'm not saying that there weren't those horrible people treating her that way but I just really personally did not like the writing of all of a sudden she went in that room. She knew somehow that there was a secret room. And then once she was there, she knew how to get in front of Leia. Like there was just so many things there. And as you continue through with her, it's just like the convenience of it all. Uh, specifically part four, I loved because I, I'm not a big Jedi Fallen Order fan. I loved the gameplay of it. I love some of the worlds we got to go to, the the castle. I think 
seeing it here in live action sort of makes me admire Jedi Fallen Order a bit more. Even like the fact that they went to uh, Baraka, I believe was the name of the planet on Bad Batch. Like seeing that stuff, I really love how we're sort of seeing more of this universe that they're building and filling in these gaps, but with these planets that we're seeing in animated and then live action. Like, I think that was really cool to go there and to see Obi-Wan get his groove back. And that again, another cool hallway fight scene was awesome. Like the, the whole water bit there, I really enjoyed. And, um, seeing the purge troopers as well was really great, but the whole escape there I thought was, uh, Really fun. I, I did. And I think that as well, just my personal reasoning of why no one noticed, uh, you know, him having extra two legs. I, I just think that they were on alert. Like they're the storm. If you look like all the storm, troops, just, they're just running around. They're just going f like so fast. You also don't know what it looks like underneath there in the stormtrooper helmets. But they're, they're, there's all the alarms going off They're They're not looking at an Imperial officer. They're, they're just not. They're going to where they need to go in that emergency. That's just my mindset of that all. I, I did enjoy the minute that Vader walked in and just force choked her. I thought was just like insane. Uh, just the power and the fear that he has I thought was incredible um, as well as uh, interesting that it was a tomb. I kind of wish we saw more Jedi that we recognize besides just, I think it was, it's come up to only like two. So yeah, uh, I don't know about that, but part five, so many iconic moments. They redeemed Reva and, and what a great twist by the way, because I, uh, I forgot to mention this with part one when it opened with, uh, what a way to open the show with order 66. I, I, again, anytime we see that I, I get emotional. Um, but seeing that I already knew because they wouldn't have put some Order 66. And I said to people immediately, I said, that's her. She's the youngling there. They sort of panned on to her for a split second there. But I'm thinking in terms of a storytelling, you're not going to show Order 66 if none of that matter. Like Anakin wasn't even in the scene, you know what I mean? So it, it was very weird that they would have shown that. So I knew that it was a part of that. They revealed she was the youngling. However, what I did not see coming was that this whole entire plot, this whole kidnapping of Leia has been her goal to get Vader's appreciation and admiration so that she could become Grand Inquisitor only to get closer to him for the opportunity to take revenge. What a great story there. What a great twist. Incredible. Should have ended right there. Should, he should have killed her. I, I think that that whole fight was incredible with the dual lightsabers uh just like him just standing there like he should have done the dooku thing boom. uh but i i really enjoyed that fight like just how he's just he's just toying with her he didn't even ignite his lightsaber for most of it. he was just he was dodging which i thought was incredible um back to vader though really loved the shot of him just pulling down uh that ship and i thought that the storytelling there of the lesson that he has to learn, I thought was really great. And to see them back, I thought was really great as well. I know that some people have de-aged them more than they should have uh, looked here in the show because they look pretty old. However, it was still an incredible moment to see. And it was a really good storytelling, I think, of of showing that, again, they say the line of you, you'll forever be a Padawan or you'll forever be the learner. And until you master that, you will always lose, which goes to the line of when I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master and the, the lines of I haven't felt this presence since we haven't felt that presence since this fight here that we saw in episode six. And he's still learning. Yes, you know, he's incredible. He's got his comic runs and he's doing all these crazy things, but his emotions, his anger of finding Obi-Wan is getting the best of him. We see that here clearly of he was distracted and he is still learning. He needs to learn to harness that still however many years uh, old he is at this point. Before we move on to part six, that message and, and her somehow a still being alive again. Fun to see the grand inquisitor come and be petty. Enjoyed that. But I just, I don't care at this point about Reva. Like I just, why are we going to Tatooine? 
Why is this a story? I, I don't understand. Part six, it opens with that. And I'm just like, how are you there already? I thought maybe, you know, it would have taken place after the fight, after he's back retired on Tatooine or something like that. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, all right, you know, there's in between the episodes of the week, I'm like, oh, there's the back to tank there that Obi-Wan used. So maybe she'll use that and she'll be fine. I understand that. However, how'd she get off the planet? All these questions I have of how'd she get there so fast? Like, and also, Bale, why are you leaving such a stupid message? It was all just so that part of the show was just so poorly written of, well, we cast this kid as a young Luke. We bought, Oh, we brought Owen and, uh, brew back. We need to, we need to do something with them. And, you know, I enjoyed seeing them protect him. I thought that was really nice. I, I did enjoy that part of it. Cause we're here. I'm stuck here. I'm stuck back on Tatooine. <laughs> we're here with the, the Lars family. And you know what? It was nice to see them protect them and die. F you know, they were ready to die for him again, which, of course, they inevitably do. Some people say it was for the droids, but, you know, it was for Luke at the end of the day. And, and I thought that that was really cool to see that moment here and for them to do something because, you know, they didn't get to do much in the prequels. But that was really nice to see. I just didn't care for for any of Reva there. And now she's still alive. And whatever she's going to do next. Or there's rumors of a solo show. And I just... I enjoyed the arc of that. Again, revenge got the best of someone. Bookend. That that should have been it. In my opinion, that should have been it. You know, the, the revenge consumed her. We see that happen with Maul. Got the better of him. You know, we see all that. It's a message. It's a story. It rhymes. Like George Lucas says. It, it's something that's all throughout Star Wars. And I just, I guess she learned a lesson of not taking revenge. Was she take, does she know it's Luke Sky that, you know, I, I didn't understand all that. He has to pay. Why does Luke have to pay? Pay for who? How? Anyways, moving on from that, the fight between Obi-Wan and, and, and Anakin and Vader was incredible. Really just that he again he got his mojo back. He he was just the the fight, the throwing of the rocks and just even how he was catching the light, he was switching hands. It was beautifully choreographed here and I didn't think it was possible. I'm not saying it's better than better than Revenge of the Sith. It's not. It's very hard to top that. It's top hard to top that as well with the music and the environment and all that, but I did enjoy this place and this this very um dull lit place that allowed you to see the lightsaber so clearly because it it showed such beautiful visuals of Anakin and when I was hearing uh, trying to hold it together when I was hearing the breathing that we hear from episode six <clears throat> my favorite Star Wars movie when we were hearing that, I was brought back to just him dying. And I was just, oh, it was so sad and so hard to watch. But I really did love just hearing it go between James Earl Jones and Hayden Christensen. It was just perfect. And I loved seeing his face. I, I thought it was the rage in his eyes and almost closure as well for Obi-Wan that Anakin was dead. And that it wasn't him that killed him. He's living with regret. Right? He For years he's thought he killed his brother. And he, he can't sleep. He's having these nightmares. And then, now that he's alive, he's having even more nightmares. You know, and like he can't, like it's just, it's waking nightmares. And then for him to sort of have closure of, it wasn't him. It was Al Palpatine. It was, it was Anakin that chose that path. That he died a long time ago. The friend that he knew died a long time ago. I thought was very powerful. Very powerful sort of closure for him. Then at the end, seeing Palpatine, so unnecessary, but so <laughs> incredible. And just the moments there between him and Vader. I, I can just, please more. Vader series, please, 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 please. And then, of course, the whole series. They're setting up Qui-Gon. 
And they did it. And it was just so short. I'd love to know their paychecks, the two of them, Ian McDermott and Liam Neeson. How much did they get paid for, like, a few lines of dialogue? I'd love to know. But, man, was it important and great to see. Also, the fact that he got to give him the Skyhopper. The fact that he had the Skyhopper because Obi-Wan gave it to him. So cute. And then he said the line too. Hello there. Like it was just, it was such a great finale minus all the tattooing stuff. I also skipped over probably what made me cry the most was the farewell to Leia and hearing him talk about the qualities that she got from her mom and her father and ah, oh, them playing that song in the back. And whenever that song plays, it always gets me. And it's just, it was just a really touching farewell, I think. And it's sad that they never got to meet again. But uh, at least not that we know of, so In incredible. <sighs> this show is perfect. I need season two. I don't know what it would be about. I didn't know what this was going to be about, but I just need it and I want it. And Vader and Hayden Christensen deserves his own show. And also, I really hope that he is going to be a Force ghost in Ahsoka or flashbacks. The only thing this show needed was Clone Wars flashbacks that would have just gone, hoo -hoo, if they were dueling. In those outfits, I think people would have lost their minds. The fan service there. But anyways, Lego talk. Uh, the two sets we have, we've got the Inquisitor ship, the Scythe. Cool looking design of a ship. It is very Krennic-esque. The minifigures in the set, I think, are very good. And I am happy that the Grand Inquisitor is in the set since I didn't have the Rebels one. And everyone else, like I think, is great. And I look forward to picking it up. However, this last one... Or it's not the last one. Hopefully we get more. But I just, why that duel? It was so, it wasn't even a duel. It wasn't Darth Vader versus Obi-Wan. He was just trying to survive. And I don't necessarily think that's Lego's fault. I think that they were probably given a lot more to that scene than they thought. But the fact that it has the fire feature and the figures in the set, like just the price is ridiculous already. Might go up. Uh, but the figures are really good. Uh, Vader needed the red eyes, but... I just, I would have rather it be the final duel. And that final duel, like having falling rocks and stuff, uh, like I'd kill to have a Vader with the ruined mask. It'd be so cool to have. And then also, again, like just, it would be sort of a duel like we had with Mustafar and same with Starkiller. Like that small, cheap price, two figures, little duel feature, that's all I need. And I'd be, I'd be so content with the two of them having that, I think would be really awesome. I need that Obi-Wan in those robes. Really, really cool. I hope that we see a minifigure of that in the dark tan robes. Which, speaking of which, the other idea here that I have for a set, and I asked Brick Tory Lap, and he created an, a really great mock-up of like what a hallway scene would look like, like we just had with Luke. But for Obi-Wan, I'd include a Purge Trooper instead of uh, all the Stormtroopers, but I, I think this would really lend itself so well, and I need a baby Princess Leia figure, which you could see in a couple of his other custom sets, I believe, or at least one of them, and I have that video uh, linked at the top here, or you can click it down below in the description, and here's the thumbnail for that. I'd love to hear your thoughts, though. I'm sure there's other ideas for other sets that you could uh, get from this, but I specifically, those are the two that I, I really, really would love to see get from Obi-Wan, but what a show. What a show. I really... It blew me away. I'd love to hear your thoughts, though. What do you think of the show? What did you think of the sets? Leave it all down below. Hope you guys did enjoy the video. Hope you all have a great day. I'll see you all in the next one.